Hello, my name is Brian. This is Just the Dis, where we talk about Blu rays. And I am doing an indicator centric episode today. Um, this is going to be partially a haul video and partially just a little something on top. So I got a bunch of stuff here from indicator um, that I'm going to go through. And I'm going to do the haul part second because I want to talk about this beauty. I'm sure you guys have seen this on other channels. Uh, it's just recently come out. Unfortunately, I didn't get this in time for November, but nonetheless, it is a beautiful uh, box set from Indicator. And as I said, I've, I think I've mentioned Indicator on this channel before, but not enough, really. Uh, because they are pretty fantastic. Uh, a company in the UK, and they've been around for a little while now, but I still feel like, unless you're a hardcore collector, you don't really know their stuff as well as you should, in my mind, just because of the quality. We're talking about Criterion-level stuff, and these box sets in particular. I've got a bunch back here, um, and um, they're just really great. And this is the first of two Columbia Noir box sets that they're putting out. The next one is coming in February, and I'll touch on that in a minute. But I just wanted to go through this thing. For one, I'm not sure if you can see, but these are really nice boxes. You know, just really solid, feel good to hold, you know, not paper thin. Um, and um, they have tons and tons of extras. Look at all that stuff. The one thing you'll need nowadays, probably with them, as they're doing it more than not, is they're region locking their content, their discs. Uh, so this whole set, I think, is region B locked. Um, but this is the kind of label that you go region free for. You know, if you're talking about Arrow, yes, I agree, definitely. Um, they are one of the big ones. Uh, Second Sight is definitely moving up in terms of somebody to consider going region free for, but Indicator is 100% your jam if you're looking to go region free. Uh, so let's just go through what's in this wonderful set here. As you can see, these are the sort of um, cardboard style cases. Look like that. And we've got a bunch of them. Um, all right. Also, we got a nice book. That's one thing that's really, it's a really cool book. Uh, just to show you kind of the wonderful, you get in essays about all the films. And I mean, this is a really nice booklet that you get with this. Um, but okay, let's just go through these real quick, all right? This one's probably the cream of the crop of the set, and um, it has the most extras. Uh, it's a really great Don Siegel film from, I think, 1958. Yes. Uh, stars Eli Wallach and Robert Keith. I recognize him, but um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know him by name. So it's really the Eli Wallach show, and it's basically a noir set in San Francisco, which I love. You know, movies set in San Francisco in general, um, one of the most cinematic cities out there. Uh, but it's kind of about a scheme where some bad guys are part of a ring, a smuggling ring, where they trick uh, tourists into bringing back drugs in, you know, mundane sort of trinkets, statues, uh, a kid's doll comes into play. And so they have a process by which their people over the seas spot these tourists and they say, this is somebody I'm going to give um, one of these drug-filled uh, statues to. And then they tell somebody back in San Francisco. And when they get off the boat, somebody steals their luggage and or finds a way into their luggage some other way and then uh, gets the drugs out and everything is copacetic, except... Sometimes it doesn't work out, as you would guess, in a film noir. Um, so, I don't know. It's a really solid one, I gotta say, and one of my favorite Don Siegel films. And uh, it's just, uh, 
it's got some nice touches to it, like Eli Wallach's character and the Robert Keith, I believe, character are partners in this smuggling ring thing. Eli Wallach is the homicidal side, and Robert Keith is sort of the brains, I guess. But he has this odd habit of asking Eli Wallach every time he kills somebody, what's the last thing that they said? And so he's got a little book where he writes down all the people's last words, which is incredibly morbid and dark and strange, um, but kind of gives you an idea of their weird dynamic. Um, but like I said, so you have this set up and then things go bad and then, yeah, you know, that's that's kind of how it goes in noir. Um, does, do, they, do the bad guys win? Do they sort it out? I mean, you'll have to see, but um, this has some great extras on it. It has an audio commentary with author James Elroy and um, Film Noir Foundation uh, man about town, Eddie Muller. Um, so that's a great track right there. You got two really interesting dudes talking about this movie. So that's wonderful. Um, another audio commentary with film historian, David DelVal and author and screenwriter C. Courtney Joyner. That's new. Uh, the influence of noir 2009 and appreciation by filmmaker Christopher Nolan. That's kind of neat. Um, a lot of these are ported over from the Columbia Noir DVD sets, which were a great group of sets. I think there was three or four, and they put out some really good noir stuff, rare stuff, that hadn't seen a home video release. And now it looks like uh, Indicator is kind of working off those sets, basically. Not the exact one-to-one. You know, volume one is not volume one of this set, but they're definitely cherry-picking titles from those. And that's exciting because there's a lot of good stuff there. Anyway, um... So the Nolan thing is good. Streets of San Francisco 2020, uh, seven minutes, a video essay guide to the locations of the lineup. I always love those. Um, three episodes of the lineup radio series. Uh, and it gives like the names of the, the actual episodes. The Candy Store Murder, uh, written by Blake Edwards, a Case of Frankie and Joyce, and the Harrowing Hagata Handball Case. Written by Blake Edwards and Richard Quine. Um, <clears throat> Tricky Dicks, 1953, 16 minutes. A comedy with the Three Stooges. You get the Three Stooges short. And then you have uh, Josh Olsen's Trailers from Hell as well. So that's a really solid disc. Like, that alone would have made it worth this set for me. But um, let's go through some of the others here. Uh, I'll go through the ones I've watched first. We have Drive a Cro Crooked Road with Mickey Rooney. And who else is in this? Um, I feel like uh, there's a couple other folks in here that I recognized. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not uh, remembering now. But basically, um, Mickey Rooney is a mechanic working in Los Angeles. And he is sort of picked out by uh, some would-be schemers, some would-be criminals who want to commit a robbery, but in order to pull it off, they figured out, like, the perfect heist. That's a lot of what noir is, too. Perfect heist is another one in the next movie. Um, but it's basically the idea that if they can get <clears throat> this robbery pulled off, the only way to avoid roadblocks is to go through this really bumpy um, back road. So they need somebody that's a good driver and has a really good car, reliable car, that will get them through this back road in like 20 minutes, and then there won't be any way the cops can set up a roadblock to stop them, and so they'll get away clean. So the idea is they have a woman who, you know, gets involved with him and sort of suckers him into it, and, you know, you kind of have to watch where it goes, but... Um, it's a good Mickey Rooney performance. It's, you know, it's a dramatic role and it's it's really solid. So just a solid setup, a solid noir. Um, I enjoyed this one. I had not seen this before this set. Um, uh, let's see here. Audio commentary with Nick Pinkerton. Always classy. I love Nick Pinkerton and I don't think I've talked about him too much on this channel. Um, maybe I've mentioned a few times, but he's one of my favorite commentators. Just a no-nonsense but still with a sense of humor, you know, wall-to-wall, -wall, well-researched, uh, just really sharp. I like Nick Pinkerton a lot. Um, 
The Guardian interview with Mickey Rooney from 1988, 83 minutes. That's one of the things they do, and I think I've mentioned this maybe before on the channel, is that they'll pull out these uh, Guardian interviews where the Guardian did a Q&A with somebody years ago, and they videotaped it, and they still have it in their archives, and it's incredible. It's an incredible resource that I feel like Indicator has really tapped into, these Guardian Q&As. Um, so 83 minutes you get with Mickey Rooney. That's really, really cool. Um, and then introduction by Martin Scorsese, only two minutes, but I always love to him to hear him talk about a noir, uh, and a few other features. I'm not going to go through every feature on all these cause I, I don't want to waste too much of your time. Just know this set is solid. Um, next up we have five against the house. This is, uh, directed by, uh, a guy that I've mentioned, I think in some of my noir uh, pick episodes or videos, uh, and that's Phil Carlson. And this one is interesting because it's it's got less of the normal trappings of a noir. You know, there's there's criminal activity, but not until basically the end of the movie. The idea is that you have four guys who are ex soldiers. They've gone to the Korean War and come home, and now are all four of them going to law school. They're going to college, um, and so one of them gets the idea their college is relatively close to Reno within an hour or two drive and they get this idea to rob a casino and that doesn't happen until really basically the end of the movie the last 20 minutes or so so a lot of it is just setting up their relationships uh, one of them is dating uh, as you can see on the front here Kim Novak and they're having sort of a complicated relationship. He wants to get married. She doesn't, blah, blah, blah. But the camaraderie between the dudes is pretty neat. And, you know, it's an enjoyable movie. And, and once it builds into the noir area, it gets tense. Because uh, Brian Keith plays one of the dudes there. And he seems to be suffering maybe from PTSD. They don't specify. It seems like it is. And he actually was um, hospitalized for a while for some um, psychological stuff. And so he's sort of a wild card, and that comes to play in the movie, and it's it's good. I, I like this. It's a solid Phil Carlson uh, audio commentary with film critic David Jenkins. Uh, there's a Guardian interview with Kim Novak, 67 minutes. That's from 1997. Um, and then something called Sweet and Hot, 17 minutes, another Stooges movie. Uh, let's see here. That's basically it, but, I mean, you're getting a lot in each of these discs. Um Okay, these I know less well. This one, interestingly, The Garment Jumble, Jungle, I believe is in the uh, Imprint Noir Volume 1 set. Uh, and there's definitely a little crossover there, like with their Columbia Noir 2 has a movie that's in the... So we're probably going to see some crossover between Imprint and their Noir boxes, which they're just getting started with, and then uh, the Indicator boxes um, but this, of course, is Region B locked, and the indicator is not. Uh, or, I'm sorry, the imprint is not. But this one, um, I can't remember what this is about. Uh, I remember looking it up uh, on the back of the other disc, but I think it's about the garment industry, and uh, and I think they're trying to unionize, if I recall. Like, Lee J. Cobb is uh, the guy who runs this uh, textile place, and I'm pretty sure... Um, He's trying to get unionized against, and he ain't having it, and it gets tense, folks. It gets tense. Um, let's see here. Audio commentary with film historian Kevin Lyons. It's a jungle out there, 2007, 20-minute archival interview with Robert Loggia. Oh, yeah, Robert Loggia, I think, is the guy that's trying to unionize against Lee J. Cobb. And if you know Lee J. Cobb, you know he's one of the great villains of cinema, ever really but certainly this era um so robert loja versus lee j cobb especially a young robert loja i'm into that um uh law of the jungle 2020 20, 15 minutes writer and film programmer tony rains discusses robert aldrich oh that's right uh is aldrich a producer on this i can't remember what his deal is with this unfortunately because uh, it's directed by Vincent Sherman, but I'm sure he ties into this, and I'm just looking silly right now, but that's all right. Um, another Stooges short, uh, Rip, Sew, and Stitch from 1953. I like that they include those. It becomes sort of a night at the movies kind of thing. All right. 
We have Undercover Man. This is with Glenn Ford. Um, you know what? I'm just going to pull up, for the heck of it, Letterbox because I, I'd love to just be able to tell you at least the barest minimum about this movie, uh, Undercover Man, because I actually started this one and I didn't get a chance to finish it, but I haven't, uh, I haven't seen it all the way through. So on Letterboxd, the synopsis says that this is, um, not that one. <laughs> Sorry, this is by Joseph H. Lewis, which is the guy that directed Gun Crazy, and uh, so I like him a lot. Uh, he did The Big Combo, also another great noir. Um, so this says Glenn Ford, James Whitmore. Uh, it says Frank Warren is a treasury agent assigned to put an end to the activities of a powerful mob crime boss. Frank works undercover, posing as a criminal to seek information, but is frustrated when all he finds are terrified witnesses and corrupt police officers. Sounds good, especially if it's directed by Joseph H. Lewis. I'm into that. Um, and uh, it's got some decent features to it. Uh, one second. It has an audio commentary with film programmer Tony Raines. Uh, that's new. Uh, Man on a Bus, 1945. A short film by Joseph H. Lewis. Now, see, that's cool. That's something I'm into. I would love to see Joseph H. Lewis working in the short format arena. So I've never seen that. So you've got a short from him. And then you have um, Income Tax Sappy. Another Three Stooges short. So that seems to be... And this one, or the trio come under the scrutiny of the U.S. Treasury. Um, <laughs> that sounds like fun. So anyway, um, they're doing stuff where, and I'm pretty sure that the other, um, yeah, the trio play tailors. You know, like they're tailoring the Three Stooges shorts to go with your movie. So you have some curation in that. I think that's super cool, too. That's something Criterion sometimes does, but um, Indicator is just really great in terms of the details, folks. Okay, and last but not least, we have Escape in the Fog with Otto Kruger. And this one, I guess, is about a military military nurse recovering at an inn from a nervous breakdown. Uh, and she keeps having dreams where she sees two men trying to murder a third man. Uh, when she meets a man who is a federal agent at the inn, she's astounded to discover he is the man in her dream who is in the intended murder victim. So I got a chance to start this one too, and it was intriguing. Definitely some spy stuff, more of a spy, you know, espionage, you know, uh, country secrets kind of thing happening. Uh, if I remember, that's kind of the play as they're trying to trick somebody into getting some, some, uh, secrets, if you will, the communists. But, um, it's interesting and it's, it's definitely one that I am curious to check out. Uh, this one has an audio commentary with film historian Pamela Hutchinson, uh, something called The Fleet That Came to Stay, a uh, 20, 22-minute uh, 1945 World War II documentary compiled by Bud Bedeker. Uh, oh, yeah, this one's directed by Bud Bedeker, so that's really cool. I've got his um, his set right there. He's a great director, so that was one of the reasons I was excited about this one. I was like, why Why was it? Oh, yes, Bud Bedeker, yes. Um, uh, let's see here. Compiled by Bedeker from original combat footage captured during the Battle of Okinawa and released shortly after Escape in the Fog. Something called You Nazi Spy, another uh, World War II uh, Three Stooges short. Uh, the trio satirized the Third Reich and helped publicize the Nazi threat to American audiences. Little uh, propaganda there from the Stooges. So that is a cool thing to have as part of this package. Um, so all these are really giving you a great package of not just noir films, but some shorts and great commentaries and interviews with the original cast. And then you get your booklet and it's just, these are, these are really amazing box sets. I just, I, I haven't had a chance to cover one on the um, channel yet. And I wanted to make sure to do so because if you aren't checking out the indicator box sets, these are some, you know, release of the year kind of, you know, sets. They're, they're really worth your time. And, and if you're into whatever they're throwing down, if it, if it be, you know, Ray Harryhausen or Westerns or William Castle, you're getting a semi-definitive 
release from them and I just I wanted to emphasize that a little bit so we're gonna talk about now that was this was not part of the sale uh, this is brand new and so it was not part of the sale that they had on their site and they don't have a lot of sales so you want to go to powerhousefilms.co.uk I think they have a newsletter you can sign up for and you want to get on that because they have sales maybe twice a year and when they do you definitely want to take advantage right so uh, I'll go through what I got from the sale now start with this we have the Dietrich uh, and Joseph von Sternberg set of course this looks very familiar right because we already have this from Criterion and the films are exactly the same uh, I'll just do a little <laughs> Uh, it's the same movies. I just got this recently. That's why it's still wrapped up. Um, but what you have is you have a whole bunch of different extras for them. And this is a Region B lock set, whereas this is, I think, yeah, Region A, the Criterion. Um, but you'll say, well, and I did. I said, well, I have the Criterion. Why do I need more versions of, what does this have? The Devil is a Woman, Scarlet Empress... Blonde Venus, Shanghai Express, Dishonored, and Morocco. Uh, well, the reason I do is because of the extras. Again, we have a really nice, thick booklet that goes with this. Oh, man. Yeah, these are really... I haven't really had a chance to dig into the booklets, and they're pretty, pretty cool. But, um, but yeah, again, Devil's a Woman, you have... I don't think they're using the same extras. Um, I'm pretty sure that... I mean, I, what I'm saying is I know that there are different extras on this. I just can't remember if they cross over at all. I'm pretty sure they don't because, again, they bring in um, some different stuff that... I feel like I've seen some of the... Uh, like, I'm, like I was talking about the... Um, uh, you know the Guardian type interview t stuff on these, but I swear I've I've looked at these, and they were different. Now maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't quote me on it, but I swore that there were some differences in these, and I may have to just pull up. Sorry to do this live, folks, but uh, sometimes I got to do it. I just want to pull up the Criterion because I don't really feel like cracking that open right now, uh, and check out some of the extras that you get on that version of the set, right? So, uh, do Okay, so let's say I want to look at Devil is a Woman, okay? So I'm going to pull up Devil is a Woman, I'm going to go to the extras, and dang it, I can't tell. <laughs> well, I'm totally blowing this, but regardless, this is a great set, and you're getting all the same movies, but I do believe there are different extras because I did research this at one point and now I can't find uh, the specifics of the extras in each of the cases for the Criterion set. Uh, but they're both great. I mean, the only thing I would say is that, again, this box is definitely a flimsier box than what I'm getting and a box shouldn't be the thing that sells you, right? But um, new interviews with film scholars Janet Bergstrom and Homie King, uh, director Joseph von Sternberg's son Nicholas, curator Silky Ronenberg, and costume designer Deborah Nadulin Landis. New documentary about actor Marlena Dietrich's German origins featuring film scholars. Gerd Gemunden and Noah Eisenberg, new documentary on... Yeah, see, I feel like you're not getting as much on each disc. You're getting some docs and some interviews, but um, I'll, have to, I'll have to follow up at some point and let you know. But regardless, it is a nice-looking set, and I do like... I mean, this is, this is a little drab, <laughs> if I'm being honest. And these are more colorful, and... I don't know. I just... I like these movies a lot. Blonde Venus and... Uh, Shanghai Express I'm a big fan of both of those this one I haven't seen Dishonored and Morocco I haven't seen which uh, I've heard is good her and Gary Cooper 
Um, so I'm sorry I couldn't do a proper Pepsi challenge with the extras, but if you look it up, I think you'll see that I'm correct. Or you can read me in the comments and let me know, dude, you're totally wrong. It's the exact same extras except it's region B locked. I swear I looked it up and I was like, oh, I don't know. Do I want to do I want to pay for a whole new set just for some extras? And then I actually looked into it and I was like, yeah, I guess I think I do. And this set was um, it was cheap. I want to say it was now I can't remember the sale price, but it was a good sale. Let me put it that like that. Uh, again, look at this. It's just beautiful. I just love these indicator sets. They're just so nice to hold on to. I just, they're beautiful. So that's my terrible rundown of the Dietrich von Sternberg set of the Paramount movies. Uh, let's see if I can do a little better with this. Probably not. Uh, this is the Bloody Terror set. And this is the films of Norman J. Warren. It's not all his films, but it's a large group of his films, as you can see there. And on the back. Right? Again, lots of features. And this is another case where I think there are different extras. And this is what I have here are other versions of these films. Uh, three or four of them were put out by Vinegar Syndrome. And then... This one was put out by Screen Factory, and I know that I went through these extras and I was seeing there were different stuff. Vine Vinegar Syndrome had their own extras, uh, and they were doing their own thing there. So let's bust this open, though. Really beautiful box set again. Look at that. I just love the way that that looks, right? The shocking cinema. And you get your nice booklet, which you don't, obviously don't get with the Vinegar Syndrome releases. And you get a poster, you know, you get some really nice stuff. Again, these books are like, I mean, this it's not insignificant. This is a this is not a pamphlet, folks. This is a really nice book for that set. Um Okay, and then you get some some lobby cards and stuff. That's really neat. All right, but let's go through these. So let's start with you get Bloody New Year. Uh if I recall my friend Aaron Pinn. Uh, describe this as Norman J. Warren's The Shining. It's a bunch of people at a hotel, a creepy hotel kind of setup. Um, it says, at the Hotel of Horror, you can check out anytime but never leave. Classic. Um, so I think these restorations might be the same as the Winter Syndromes. That's just a guess. Uh, but this one has an audio commentary with Warren and film historian Joe Botting. Now let me see. I'm going to pull up my... I don't know, this just says audio commentary with Norman J. Warren. It might be the same track, actually. Um, but that's all this this has, is just that track, okay? I mean, I do like that cover, and I do like the slipcase, which is the same cover as, well, it's a little different, actually. Um, but so then in addition to that, this one has, uh, let's see, uh, Norman J Norman's Wisdom 2019, 29 Minutes. Uh, and it has Warren discusses some of the lesser known areas of his career, including his work in television and documentaries. That's cool. That's not on the uh, Vinegar Syndrome disc. Um, New Blood, 2019, 16 minutes. Actor Catherine Roman warmly remembers her first film role. I guess this is her first movie. Uh, then it has Fights, Camera, Action, uh, 11 minutes, actor and stuntman Steve Emerson recalls his work with Warren on Terror and Bloody New Year. And then working with Warren, 10 minutes, an interview with filmmaker and Warren collaborator uh, Yixi Sun. Something called Turn Off Your Bloody Phone, Norman J. Warren and the Ghost uh, from 2013, one minute, a short produced by produced for Fright Fest, starring Warren, Sun, and David McGill Givelray. I guess it's a turn off your phone kind of um, promo. Um, but that's a, that's a lot more than you're getting here, you know? Um, I got to double check that that commentary is the same one as this. Um, but I may be getting rid of that vinegar syndrome. I don't know. I do like that setup. Um, now this one definitely does have something different because I, I saw it. Um, so this is in Samnoid, and I'm going to read off the back of the Scream Factory. 
because I have a little synopsis here. It says an alien creature has been waiting millions of years for a chance to breed and its time has finally come when a group of space explorers unwittingly lands on its home planet. The 12 member crew is investigating for possible origins of, for the planet's vanished civilization. Instead, they awaken the planet's creature and discover that the horror to come is more terrifying than any nightmare that they could ever imagine. I.e., I think he wants to breed. Um, so this one has, uh, let's see here. I'm going to do a full on comparison. Uh, so this one, let's just, we'll start with this. So this has. Uh, audio commentary with Warren and assistant director Gary White. That's from 2004. Uh, let's see here. Audio commentary. New interview. Well, we'll come back to that. So that's one. That's an old commentary. Then it's got the BH, BEHP interview with Norman J. Warren, part two. So I guess there's another part in here um, and another set. And that's from 2018, 67 minutes, an archival video recording made as part of the British Entertainment History Project. They do a lot of these BEHP, I think I mentioned this before, British Entertainment History Project archival interviews, and they tend to be long form interviews, so they're good uh, in terms of the extras. Um, but okay, so uh, then we have, uh, let's see here, uh, Norman J. Warren at the Manchester Festival of Fantastic Films, that's 2011, 62 Minutes, another archival video interview with him. Um, and then Subterranean Universe, 2004, 45 Minutes, archival documentary on the making of Insemnoid, featuring interviews with Warren, actress Stephanie Beckman, David Baxt, and Barry Houghton, uh, and others. Uh, Alien Encounter, 2019, 6 Minutes, actor Trevor Thomas recalls playing the part of Mitch, Electronic Approach, uh, 13 minutes archival interview with composer John Scott trailers. Okay, so that's what you get with this. There's one big documentary on this that I know is not on that, but um, so the Screen Factory says a new, new, a very English exploitation in Seminoid and the Shock Cinema of Norman J. Warren, a 90 minute documentary on the life and times of director Norman J. Warren, featuring con contributions from Warren, actress Jennifer Ashley, visual effects artist Jess Harris, screenwriter and critic. David McGivray, author Kim Newman, and filmmaker Pete Walker. So that's one of the reasons I'm going to hold on to this, is because it's got that doc. Um, new audio interview with Norman J. Warren, Warren uh, Alien Encounter, an interview with Norman J. Warren, uh, Q&A with producer Richard Gordon and Norman J. Warren, uh, Q&A with Norman J. Warren, Manchester Film Festival. I think that's a crossover. Q&A with Norman J. Warren. Um... It looks like there's two F Manchester Festival of Fantastic Films interviews on this one, but I don't see the commentary. So that's one that it doesn't have. Anyway, um, so a little crossover, but definitely some different stuff there. Then we have Terror, which I have as a Vinegar Syndrome. Again, now these this set I should have prefaced and said is, I believe, all region. Okay, so I think the vinegar syndromes are also all region, but just so you know, this one is not region locked. As I said, they've been doing region locking a little bit more recently, um, so you want to check, but they used to be mostly region free or region, yeah, it was mostly all region. Um, but um, okay, so Terror, uh, country estate of a filmmaker, James Garrick, has been haunted for centuries by a mysterious and deadly curse. Everyone in his family line comes to a gruesome end at the hand of an unknown supernatural assailant when Garrick's long lost cousin Anne unexpectedly arrives at his secluded manor mayhem and bloodshed soon follow but is Anne the person behind these acts of carnage or could something more horrifying be afoot okay so we have on this one the vinegar syndrome uh, extensive audio interview with director Norman J. Warren conducted by Kat Ellinger that's pretty cool uh, then it has brand new video interviews with Norman J. Warren, David McGivilray, uh, Carolyn Courage, Trisha Walsh, uh, Mary Maud, Peter Craze, some deleted and extended scenes. Okay, so that's on that. And then on this we get uh, audio commentary with Warren and screenwriter David McGivilray. So that's not on the other one that I can tell. Um, 
Then we have the early years, uh, 17 minutes. Warren recalls his first films as a director. Bloody Good Fun, 41 minutes, archival documentary on the making of terror, featuring interviews with Warren, McGivel Ray, uh, actress Carolyn Courage, Mary Maud, James Aubrey, and Elaine Ives Cameron, and others. And then something called Tales of Terror, 13 minutes, actor John Nolan reflects on the terror's production. Norman J. Warren, a sort of autobiography, 2004, 28 minutes, archival interview with the director. Four extended scenes with introductions by Warren. Uh, Norman J. Warren presents Horror Show 2008, 33 minutes, an anthology film of five horror tales hosted by Warren. Well, that's cool. Uh, Deadly Cross 2011, two minutes, a trailer for a 1978 Lost film with voiceover by Warren. And then trailers and stuff. So, again, there's crossover, but it's not all the same. And I haven't done a check to see which interviews could be the same or not. I don't know. Next, we have Prey. I also have the vinegar of that. Uh, this one says, an alien craft carrying a being with fox-like features has landed in the middle of rural England after brutally murdering, murdering a young couple. The being animates himself into the body of a man he killed, adopting the name Anders. Upon being discovered by a reclusive lesbian couple who mistake him for an injured drifter, they invite him to recover in their isolated home, unaware of his innate bloodlust. Uh, so this has... Commentary track with Warren uh, and Sally Faulkner, actress, directing The Prey, interview with Norman J. Warren, becoming The Prey, interview with Sally Faulkner, producing The Prey, interview with Terry Marcel, the producer. And then on this, we have, um, let's see here, audio commentary with Warren and film historian Jonathan Rigby. I can't tell if that's the same. Uh, the BHP interview with Norman J. Warren, part one. Here's part one of that. So that other one was over an hour. This one is 60 minutes. So you've got another archival video interview made as part of the British Entertainment History Project uh, featuring Warren in conversation with Martin Sheffield, who I think does most of the BHP interviews. Um, then you have, uh, let's see here, Keep on Running, 28 minutes archival documentary on the making of Prey. Featuring interviews with Warren and Sally Faulkner, producer Terry Marcel, and others. On set footage, 1977, three minutes, rare behind the scenes footage with commentary by Mission to Locate. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> with commentary by Warren. The Bridge, 1955 to 57, seven minutes, rare footage from Warren's ambitious early film project uh, about a pilot on a mission to locate a bridge in Germany during World War II with optional director's commentary. Uh, Making the Bridge, 1957, two minutes, rare and previously unseen footage with commentary by Warren. Uh, Carol, 1962, three minutes, uh, mute test footage from Warren, unrealized feature about a teenage pregnancy and backstreet abortion, featuring uh, comedy short direct, whoops, no, I'm crossing over stuff. So. Um, Georgia Hale and Michael Craze with optional director's commentary. Wow, they've got all that. Drinking Time, 1963, three minutes, silent comedy short directed by Warren. Drinking Time, introduction with Warren, four minutes. He gives an introduction longer than the short, uh, longer than the footage. Uh, Whippersnappers, 1977, one minute, toy advertisement directed by Warren. Whippersnappers, introduction by Warren, four minutes. So you get introductions and shorts, and this box set's pretty amazing. Actually, more so than I even knew when I ordered it. So I'm kind of discovering this with you guys as I'm reading through these, and it's very exciting. Um, last in this set... I don't have it anymore. Uh, Satan Slave also came out from uh, Indicator. I'm sorry, from <laughs> getting them all confused. From Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, let me just peek at that one really quick because I cannot recall, outside of the obvious, uh, what this one is about. So this is a Warren film from 76. It says a young girl is caught up in a devil cult run by her evil uncle and cousin. She can trust no one and even people she thought were dead come back to haunt her. Pretty simple. Sounds pretty interesting. I don't have the extras in front of me for that one, but I'll go through these. Um, let's see here. Uh, two presentations of the film in the director's, uh, director's cut, 89 minutes, and the export version, 90 minutes. Audio commentary with Warren and screenwriter David McGivilray. 2004, audio commentary with Warren and composer John Scott, two commentaries. 
Before the blood, 29 minutes, Warren recalls his earliest experiences in the film industry. All You Need Is Blood, 1976, 13 minutes, vintage making of documentary presented in high definition for the first time. All You Need Is Blood outtakes, 33 minutes, rare and previously unseen footage shot on location. Wow, they got a lot of stuff for this. Uh, Creating Satan, 2004, 30 minutes, archival documentary featuring interviews with Warren, McGill Ray, actor Martin Potter, and others. Devilish Music, 2004, 13 minutes, archival interview with John Scott. Two deleted scenes with commentary by Warren. Censoring Satan Slave, uh, 16 minutes, video demonstration of the cuts imposed by the British Board of Film Censors in 1976. Uh, original U certification theatrical trailer, original R rated trailer. So that's it for those sets. And as I said, these are pretty great. I'm pretty excited to have these. It really is like, you know, as much as, I don't know, I feel like Criterion does do the box sets like the Sternberg and everything, but this is like almost like a career retrospective in terms of everything that you get in this box set. So. That's a pretty exciting set, and um, I do thank again, Mr. Warren, Mr. Uh, Aaron Pin, for mentioning this one as something he was going to pick up, and I was like, you know what, I should really get that. I have some of those, but this set definitely has some stuff I don't have, and so I need it. Uh, okay, so that are the those are the box sets I got. I've just got a couple more things real quick. This one is called The System. It's also called The Girl Getters. This is an early Michael Winner film from the 60s, I want to say 64. And this one also has, I have a lot of doubles here. I don't usually have this many doubles, but this is the Kino Lorber release, which has a different commentary track. Um, but this one says from Michael Winner, the acclaimed director of uh, Hannibal Brooks, Nightcomers, Scorpio, Stone Killer, The Big Sleep remake. We know him from the Death Wish movies, come on. Um, comes this mischievous comedy, the first of six collaborations between director and star Oliver Reed. I, I forgot they did six movies together. That's so neat. But young Oliver Reed is pretty great. Um, so Reed is the leader of a gang of handsome but unscrupulous young uh, bachelors who spend a hot summer on a seaside resort in pursuit of women, including Jane Marrow, uh, Barbara Ferris. Uh, one of the gang, jealous of Reed's success, uses their, quote, system to hoist the leader on his own, uh, basically to call him out. Um, so he has this system by which he picks up girls. And that's what the movie is about, is how they sort of charm the ladies at the seaside resort or whatever, the seaside town. And it's got that sort of, not American Graffiti or Evie Loney, but that kind of vibe a little bit. But Oliver Reed just has the charm for miles in this, and he's so fun and funny in this. And yeah, I, I've seen a few of the other uh, Michael Winner, Oliver Reed movies, and I haven't seen one I haven't liked. Um, this is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, so this one has a commentary by film historian Stephen Vogg and something called Getting the Girl, Jane Marrow on the System. And then this has... Uh, audio commentary by film historians Thurza Wakefield and Melanie Williams. Getting the Girl, 18 Minutes. That's the, uh, the same thing as that other one. Uh, then we have Drinking and Dancing, 6 Minutes. Actor John Porter Davison recalls the experience of making this movie. Fun and Games, 4 Minutes. Actor Jeremy Burnham discusses working with Oliver Reed and Michael Winner. Haunted England, 1961, 24 Minutes. Winner's tongue-in-cheek Eastman Color travelogue about stately homes and other famous places with ghostly tales uh, to tell, hosted by broadcaster David Jacobs. That's really cool. See those little shorts and things? I love that they include that stuff. Um, that's basically it, but that was another one I picked up. And then I have one more that I picked up based on a recommendation from my friend Phil Blankenship, who was just recently on our um, Pure Cinema podcast and we did uh, thrillers, 80s and 90s thrillers and he was able to pull this one out and I had never seen this before. Uh, it's it's called Bellman and True. It's sort of a bank heist thing. You should go listen to the thrillers episode if you're interested and Phil gives a nice synopsis of 
what this is and what it's about. Uh, let me see if I can just pull something up here. And it is a computer expert who was bribed by a group of bank robbers to obtain details of the security system at a newly built bank. Uh, having obtained the information, he thought he'd seen the last of the robbers, but now they've traced him and his son to London. They hold the son hostage and force Hiller to decode the information about the alarm and then take part in the robbery. So it's sort of a kidnapping, robbery, heisty thingy. But Phil recommended it, so I am on board with it. It definitely sounds interesting to me. Uh, and um, it's got some nice extras also. You have two presentations of the film, the pre-release. Oh, this is a region B-locked disc, as is... Oh, the system's all region, so that's not region locked. But this one is. Uh, let's see. Two presentations... Uh, the pre-release version that premiered at the 1987 London Film Festival, 122 minutes, and the original UK theatrical cut, 114 minutes. Running in traffic, uh, 24 minutes. Uh, Richard Lawn Crane, the director, recalls the production of the film. Uh, Just an Adventure, 20 minutes. Actor Kieran O'Brien talks fondly of his first film role. Cracking the System, 17 minutes. Screenwriter and author Desmond Loudon discusses adapting his own novel for the screen. Uh, Trust Me, 10 Minutes, composer Colin Towns looks back at the creation of the film's score, trailers, etc. So that is it. That is my whole haul for the, um, for the sale. I didn't go too crazy, but, you know, two box sets and two uh, films definitely seems like uh, I, I came out okay, especially as I go through these with you guys. Um, but, like I said, Powerhouse films.co.uk I'm going to put it in the, the description box below but I, I want you to go there and check it out get a sense of what they have look at the region coding decide if that's a problem for you but they definitely have some stuff that's not region locked that you can enjoy and that I do recommend Like they don't have a release I've ever been disappointed in they are an incredible company and I really would like to continue to highlight them on this channel but I certainly just want to point people in that direction. If you're not already paying attention to Indicator, they should be on your list of places to keep track of when they announce new titles. Um, it's always interesting stuff. You know, some of it uh, tends to be airing more towards some of the films made in the UK, uh, but they're definitely putting out a lot of American films as well. It's an interesting mix, and uh, they do these box sets. Like I said, the Columbia Noir Volume 2 uh, is coming in, I want to say, February, February 15th, I believe. And that one has some cool titles in it. Uh, I'm, I'm blanking on, oh, there it is. It has um, Framed, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive, The Mob, Affair in Trinidad, Tight Spot, and Murder by Contract, which is maybe one of my favorites uh, looking at this set. That's a really great one. Um that I can't wait to have on Blu-ray. So if you're into noir and you're region free, you need to be getting on these um, noir sets. But uh, I'm sure we'll have some more cool box sets announced from them in 2021. But I uh, just wanted to shine a little spotlight on them and talk about them and I'm done. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. So thank you guys for watching. If you like these kind of videos or the channel in general, uh, please subscribe and you know press the thumbs up if you can and leave a comment. Let me know if you've bought some indicator titles, what you've bought, what you like from them. Uh, that'd be great. But uh, anyway, thank you guys. Bye-bye.